day, everyone, and welcome to uh, another episode of Under the Microscope. My name is Marcus Benjamin, and I am the founder of AM Career Consulting, which is a non for profit organization registered and operating out of the state of New York. If this is the first time you've seen our episode or our podcast, Under the Microscope, AM Career Consulting is focused on delivering a high level of career coaching to underserved and under underserved communities and underprivileged communities in the New York area and bring in career coaching, um, helping individuals with their resume, their cover letter, even helping with their LinkedIn profile, mock interviews, utilizing all the necessary or all the up-to-date technology that companies use for recruiting. To come to make contact with me or my team, you can send us an email at info at amcareerconsulting.org. You can also visit our website at amcareerconsulting.org. So today I have um, two special people with me. Um, Darwin Harris is returning back to Under the Microscope and joining him is his director. All right, um, his name is David Ham. Welcome, you guys. Welcome to Under the Microscope. As I shared with Darwin the last time he was here, we kind of take you and place you under that special lens. So we're going to take a deep dive, get a better understanding of your career, all the work you have been doing. And um, so in that way, our viewers will be able to see, we'll be able to get a little more insight. And probably, you know, after hearing this conversation, you, it might spark those one or two individuals who have a desire for acting or to be a director to really kind of push through and um, make their dreams come true. So welcome, Mr. Harris, and welcome, Mr. Ham, to you. Under the Microscope. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. You're welcome. It's a pleasure to have you guys um, on the show, and Darwin, it's a pleasure to have you back. So um, I've been... I've been keeping up with um, the good work both of you all have been doing. And the, the, latest, um, the latest production that's coming out, and I believe it's this Friday, right? Is that yes. correct? It's called Three Days Later. So can you share, I mean, I saw the thriller. I'm going to give, give, give all of you, my viewers, a little um, insight into the thriller. But can you share a little bit about what Three Days Later is about? Yeah. Um, three Days Later is the story um, of Christ, um, his death uh, and his resurrection, um, but uniquely um, told through the life of 11 of his disciples. And... Um, it's also a unique approach to portraying the 11 disciples in um, sort of an unknown time period. So instead of going 2000 years back, we actually went forward and created uh, a bit of this dystopian postmodern uh, setting to, to really kind of heighten the suspense and, and heighten a little bit of the unknown, which is what they were facing at the moment. Um, after Christ died on the cross, scripture makes it very clear that the 11 were hiding in fear, um, mm -hmm. not sure what was going to happen next. And so we kind of took a, a, a short but deep dive into just the inner turmoil that the 11 might have been facing um, over the course of three days, grieving the death of Jesus, um, feeling guilty and shameful for running away, um, as scripture tells us, at the moment that Jesus was arrested, and, um, and also still just wrestling with the, just the uncertainty of time, the, the times that they were in, um, the pride of life, and, uh, and, and creating a, a conversation and a dialogue amongst the 11 that, that's also relevant to just a lot of the things that we're, we're, we're feeling and going through right now. Wow, thanks for sharing that. You know, in watching the thriller and knowing the story, um of the crucifixion and and um i'm a christian myself and um you know growing up knowing about the story and watching so many different um films and so forth that kind of give a depiction of you know what transpired 
mm-hmm. in watching this, um, in watching the thriller, I kind of put myself in that situation mm-hmm. and and kind of looked at where I can kind of um, identify that the you know the turmoil, as you mentioned, these individuals were going through. You know, because I, knowing the story before, you know, they make promises that, you know, we will never defy you. We will never do this. We'll never do that. And then at the moment of truth, that wasn't the case. So that showed the human, the human part of us being human beings for the yeah. most part, right? That, you know, under pressure, under fear, and fear is one of our biggest enemy, right? That we fall. Yeah. So... De- definitely, I was able to see that in the um, in the in the in the short thriller, and I it kind of draw me in. Good. You know, so rest assured that I'll be sitting there looking to see the entire thing. And um, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So I'm planning to. I'm taking a road trip with my family actually um, tomorrow, and um, Friday we'll be. I'm taking my laptop with me. I promise not to carry it, but I'm gonna carry my laptop. <laughs> I want to be able to show, you know, my family. We could all sit and watch it together. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. And um, Darwin, when in in your part in 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 this um, clip, I mean, I just expressed my my perspective in terms of me putting myself in that place, but you were actually there enacting what transpired yeah well what was going through your mind well i think it was like a brilliant script written by david as well um and of course he was directing it and did a great job with that my experience with it i mean ever since i was a child i've seen every variation of a easter crucifixion film and it was always taken from the perspective of christ and the cross and all that he went through and all the pain that he suffered um in route to his uh, uh, crucifixion. But the thing about this that made it really wonderful and like you said before, um, brings out the humanity in it is that you actually see the humanity of the 11 mm-hmm. and how all of those 11 um, men represent all of us. You know, like one of them can represent any one of us out here in the regular world. So it gives us a way to actually um, relate and to really, you know, put ourselves in a situation where, okay, have we ever been in a situation where we've been told what is true? And then when you're actually faced with the truth, you then don't believe it, that that is too good to be true. You like, you like right. a, a, that, you know? Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, David did a really good job, especially in the rehearsal process prior to shooting of just, you know, uh, making sure that we understood um, how high the stakes were and how even though Jesus Christ was not guilty, that we would then be guilty by association in the eyes of the people who killed him and that we were next. So Mm. um, in a lot of the conversations in the script and a lot of conversations in the film, it really brings out, you know, all the anxiety, the fear, the anger, the sadness, the grief. And we're able to see 100% that, okay, if we were in that situation, that will 100% be one of us. You know, one of us will be Peter. My cousin might be Matthew. <laughs> or my niece might be, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, John. So, I mean, it very much brings out the humanity of it. And, um, and as you can see in the trailer, it's very chilling and very, very powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it is great. Um, if if I can, I know we we talked about it for a few minutes. We talk about it for a few minutes, but I would definitely love to um, to show it to our to our guests. All right, just give me one minute. I'm going to bring it up. Just bear with me one minute here. You know, it's like when you want these things to work, it's 
<laughs> sure, sure, um, David, you can definitely attest to that when you want something to work and it's oh, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it happens. <laughs> your faith and everything we believed in is gone he showed us what real love and kindness looks like and after all we experienced with him we just ran when he needed us the most and what we're telling you is the truth the grave couldn't hold him Completely delivered because of him. I'm not going back to who I was. He's alive. That is so good, man. Oh. <laughs> It's like no. every time I watch it, it's like chilling. It's like, oh man, I, I can't explain it. But you know, it's it's awesome. You know, just the the, the background music, um, the, the emphasis in uh, hold on, I'm still here in the background. Oh, okay, sorry about that. Sorry. Every time I watch it, I like discover something new, you know, just about the story and about the characters, you know, just just about because I'm the kind of person I always try to put, put myself in the situation, right? You know, even after what we like shot it for was it 12 days? Yeah, yeah. Um, and even after being, you know, unset for all those days and being in rehearsal, even now thinking back and like watching the trailer just brings me just something new is revealed. Yeah, you know. Wow, which is great. Yeah, I got to tell you, uh, um, Darwin, uh, my brother uh, Marcus, he is a true professional um, and brings just an authentic A game to uh, the work that he does. Um, you know, you want you want to see characters develop that are are honest and real. Um, and, and that's what Darwin brings to the table, um, playing the role of Nathaniel. Um, and in scripture, uh, the Bible tells us that Nathaniel was considered by Jesus to be a very honest man, um, which is one of the things that, uh, that drew Nathaniel um, and, and it caused him to follow Jesus was just the way Jesus just called him out for who he was in terms of his personality um, and 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 Nathaniel was looking for honesty because he was an honest man so he doesn't really hold back he just he just says it as is um, and, and if this is how I feel right now I'm just gonna I'm gonna lay it out there and <laughs> um, and I find even Darwin to be that kind of person like it, you're just honest you just you're gonna ask a question you're gonna have to ask a question if you have a thought you're gonna say the thought and 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 also too like very observant so and but the way you just absorb and observe like just on set it he's just always ready you know a lot of times we're like running around in between takes actors are drifting and they're tired and we're like come on everybody let's go and there'd be times where um you know it was like a clarion call coming from darwin like let's go like come on he'd have these, these moments where he was like a spark trying to get the energy back up and, and he really did become just just a leader and just a strong and tall pillar uh on set <laughs> I, one thing I, I could definitely um, attest to that, you know, knowing Darwin, a very straightforward guy, you know, and then having conversation with him, um, I, he, you know, he did share that in the film industry, you know, he did a lot of different things, but this is, this pretty much is his calling. Mm. Bring forth, you know, these kind of stories, you know, always for the greater good. And, and and I think when we spoke the last time, um, that's that that's being myself and Darwin. You know, he shared that 
you know, is that fulfillment, mm. you know, and uh, we shared a little bit about the silent night, the Christmas journey and, and how it made him feel, you know, um, when, when he, he had a part to play in it and, and he, that was well executed. Um, it, it is like the roles that he played actually fits the person and it makes uh, it, that was, tell me if I'm wrong. I love them in that role. Tell me if I'm wrong, but it 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 the organic feel yeah. that you know you, you don't detect that somebody's trying. You just detect that hey, this is somebody, and yeah, you know it, it it's like real life. Yeah, but you know something. Um, that's also you know honestly, um, and thank you by the way. Um, <laughs> you all like, but that's what also the director does too because you know like the the director you know cast the actors based upon you know, their, uh, their talent and I'm sure part of who they are um, in the personality and their spirit played part of, you know, as well. And, but he was able to get a lot of it out of me, you know, and like there was never really a conversation of, oh, you know, Darwin, I know you have this in you. David has like a gift of speaking an actor's language and really, yeah. really relating to people and, and like knowing what you want knowing what the actor needs without the actor ever asking or telling them what it is. And that's a gift, a gift from the Holy Spirit um, that, that he's been given. Um, and also, you know, something that he always does. And like, this is something, and I actually told him this on the set that like, he's, he's my, my favorite director ever because he, he speaks the language, he's transparent, because a lot of times, you know, as insecure as actors can be, after a take, um, you want to go to the director and be like, hey, was that good? Is there anything else you need? You know, but like, I'm with him, you don't need to ask that because you trust the fact that if something went bad, if there's like a messed up line or a moment that was bad, that he'll just tell you or just tell everybody else to um, come together and do it again. And he leads every um rehearsal every shoot day with prayer which is something that i've never experienced which is you know something that's definitely needed especially in a show like this where you know you it's really really intense and it can be very easy to not have any sort of levity positive energy because everything is just so so intense yeah w wonderful great oh Great work, guys. Great work. I'm really proud of y'all, man. Grateful for your words, brother. Great yeah. day. I really, I really, I'm really proud, you know. Um, so when, when would this, I know it's Friday, but is there a specific time? Where can myself and all the other viewers, um, you know, who will be seeing this video because I'm pushing to get my, um, my technology guy to, to edit this by tomorrow so we can have it premiering at least sometime yeah. on Friday so it kind of helps set the stage for when um, the release so right. uh, it's Friday and, and at what time for for you guys yeah awesome Friday seven o'clock um, p.m. yeah uh, p.m. yeah okay eastern yeah eastern that's right <laughs> all right and um, oh. you can find you can get information um, at tsc.nyc on our website and you can also go to our youtube page and that that's it's going to be on uh shown on our website it's going to be shown on our youtube channel uh times square church youtube channel and also to um on facebook too as well It'll be available on all three platforms yeah so i'm pretty excited awesome awesome i'm really really looking forward to it so yes i will be locked in i yeah, promise so Part one, part one is Good Friday. And, um, and what you get with the film too is just like a, an intro uh, of just kind of some of our praise and worship that's been filmed in a beautiful way. Uh, and, and you're gonna be really blessed by just kind of the whole service and then it'll go into uh, the film. And then our, our senior pastor, Tim Delina, he's gonna close out the service um, just with a little short word that kind of ties everything to, together. And he's gonna actually, um, we're gonna actually encourage people wherever they are watching to take communion with us. Um, and, and then part two 
um, Easter Sunday. It's going to happen Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, but it's also going to happen Saturday night too for those that might have already plans for the day Easter for the holiday. So you can catch part two Saturday night and even Sunday morning. So, All right. And all this information will be on on um, YouTube on, on, and yes. also on what, what was the website one more time? TSC.NYC. Yeah. All right. You all heard it. So make sure you log in. I will be logged in, you know, taking it in with my family. Great. So that's some great, great stuff. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about um, uh, Silent Night, a Christmas journey. Yeah. Which was, um, it was really, really cool. It was good. It was exceptional. It was well coordinated. I think every single person that, that played a role well did it exceptionally well all right um the one person that always stood out and i was shocked when darwin shared with me is um my god what's the what's the the, the guy name who who act like he had autism or, or... oh yeah oh, charlie. charlie charlie yeah yeah charlie. <laughs> I, I i asked darwin i'm like darwin is he is that his is that him in, in person in real like you know i was thinking it's okay because it seems so authentic and 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 not like scripted at all you know he yeah. played that so real yeah. right that was that was good work man oh <laughs> oh man thank god yeah he's uh his name is caleb he's a super talented young actor um and was very intentional about honoring the the autistic community um mm -hmm. and making sure that um he did his own research and we took some time we, we we actually sat down had you know just about an hour and a half time of just kind of asking questions and uh, you know and talking through to what extent do we want this character to have autism um and and we wanted him we wanted him to be the hero in the film you know with some supernatural support you know, right. <laughs> you know which uh, which is which was a real blessing to just to see it just kind of come together and to truly be a heartwarming story what's really cool is and um, we're actually um going to um do another cut of the film so we're, we're gonna do another edit and and do like like a re-release uh potentially late fall of this year into that Christmas holiday. So. Oh, that is exciting news, man. I must say um, the the part that was played, it it it, it highlighted that, yes, we ha we do have people who might be autistic or might have different challenges. Yeah. But it still goes it, it the, the movie really shows that these individuals with divine intervention right mm -hmm. can definitely have that impact mm -hmm. and that impact was felt on the show you know and in so many occasions where where he was able to to speak truth and to speak life mm -hmm. into a situation even when i remember there was this one guy i think he lost his job and he was going to jump off the bridge and so forth and just at that moment, it, it felt so real because you could just imagine how many people going through that situation, how many yeah. old stories that are probably out there that individuals at that last minute, at that last call, someone stepped in mm. and was able to offer a good word and help that person to change their mind. And for, for, for that part to play out was really, really instrumental. So that was really, really good. I mean, it was so authentic, man. That was well coordinated. And then, you know, with Darwin and his the role he played, you know, in the beginning, I was watching it and I'm like, you know, because I know Darwin, and I was like, what this fool doing now? <laughs> <laughs> right? I was because I didn't understand in the beginning of the, you know, it, it didn't really tell you what role he was playing. So it looked like it was just like this person that was just trying to hustle somebody out of money or whatever the case is but you know as you go through the show you get to see that 
you know, he was one of the handpicked angels placed here on earth along a lot huh? As a spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Alongside um the other young lady, you know, who who really helped guide and um oversaw, you know, that entire family. You know, that that was really, really good. So, you know, it's like, oh, I was really fooled, you know. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that's how I felt. I was like, okay, they got me. They got me. <laughs> <laughs> they got me. So what I want to do is um, just show the clip. I'll show a little piece of it. And then um, on the back end, you know, we can have a little more conversation. Um, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's go. Wait, he said what? He said that he wants to go out with me next week. Yes, yes! So, what are you gonna wear? You need something mad cute. Something that'll make him take his face mask off because he can't breathe. My mom and dad won't let me out of the house if I'm wearing something that, well, you know. Okay, this is what we'll do. Forget your parents. I'll come by and pick you up. We'll go shopping and I'll hold on to the clothes. We'll make this happen. Deal? be home soon. Okay, Mom. Bye. Hey, young man, you have some extra change to spare? Pennies, or dimes, or dollars? I have pennies and quarters and... Is that all you have, young man? Can you give me something to eat then? I have a sandwich here. Are you kidding me? You took a out already. I'm sorry. How did you know? Oh, you can give me germs like that. I'm sorry. I can get sick from you if I eat that. I'm sorry. All right, now. Hey, get away from my brother. Wait, did you just take his sandwich? He gave it to me. Charlie, did you give him your sandwich? Yes. OK, fine. Well, now that you have something to eat, you can leave my brother alone. <laughs> oh, what? What are you going to do, huh? Oh, well, I'm not going to do anything. But my older brother standing right behind you, he's going to do whatever's necessary. Is there a problem? Yeah, he was bothering Charlie. Who, me? Oh, oh, not me, tough guy. I was simply talking to the young man, and he came over. Listen, and... nobody bothers my sister or my brother. You got that? Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to count to 10, and you better start running before I'm done. Or what? Or you won't be able to run. OK, then, well. I guess I'll fly away. Here I go, I'm flying. I'm flying away. Are you okay, Charlie? <laughs> oh, uh, that brings uh, a smile to my face. So good. Oh my God, that was that was funny. My kids were watching it. I was letting them watch this like about a week ago, and. They were they were cracking up. They was like, I'm gonna fly away. And they see they're flying through the house. I'm like, you better sit down. 
<laughs> so that was funny, but that was that was really good. Um, was a really good intro to the entire show. It kind of sets the stage yeah. a lot. Um, but what what motivated this um, this this movie? Yeah, um, that's, that's such a good question. Um, I I knew I wanted to uh, do a Christmas film project with uh, Times Square Church and um, and it, I knew it, we wanted it to be heartwarming, uh, but we just wanted just to just take a unique approach this time around. I've I've got a, a brother-in-law who's autistic and I've also got a nephew who's autistic and um, both of them uh, very, uh, very dear to me. Um, and especially having watched both of them overcome um, their area of weakness and, and establish significance just in their life and just within the family, a blessing to the family in a lot of ways. And so I started to, to just, I was just, I found myself in a season two where I just, I just kind of noticed just the, the autistic community and just the challenges that they face and their, their willingness to kind of go above and beyond um, just the norm. And that, and so that actually the Charlie's character came out of me actually taking some time to have a conversation with a young man who collected grocery carts at the local grocery store that I, uh, that I normally go to, that I frequent. And I just actually took the time to just, you know, rather than him just being the guy who just comes behind me as I'm like putting all the bags in my car, they'll kind of like in an awkward way, just kind of stand there and wait for you to be done and just take the cart. And I had a moment where I just kind of engaged him in a conversation and, just wanted to let him know that hey, God loves you and uh, and that he cares for you. And his response was like, uh, just really joyful and knowing that, wait, you don't see me just as somebody just that's taking the cart. You see me as a person. And we just started to have like this little conversation for about a minute, you know, not nothing long. And I, I walked away from that going, man, how, how often do we just kind of overlook the, the autistic community? Um, uh, as being just sort of just uh, just kind of like the pawn uh, uh, in comparison to all the other chess pieces and, uh, and, in life. And so I decided I'm going to make Charlie the main character and tell a story that's centered around him. Wow. The guy, the guy in the supermarket, was his name Charlie? No, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you you mentioned something that is so um, crucial that you know I've seen it myself where individuals will like frown upon you know um, you know people from the disabled community or who have um, autism and it, it's uh, it's all out of ignorance of course right and they let fear step in because I don't know what you know perception they they created in their mind that you know these individuals um are less of a human or whatever the case they they form in their mind which is just ignorant but these individuals as you could attest to and darwin could attest to we are all placed here on earth for a purpose right but the main thing that a lot of us don't take the time to do is to identify what that purpose is mm -hmm. right and i think when we do find that purpose and we work within that purpose then and you you know ultimately we know who gets the glory right yeah god gets the glory and that's what we are here on this face of the earth for you know to 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 find and to identify find that purpose and work within that purpose mm -hmm. and that's when i guess and, and darwin could probably attest to this when you find yourself in a situation where it's your calling it's your purpose everything seems so flawless because it's because it's like we were destined to walk so as you walk and you talk we don't think about it right and playing those roles that you were called for <laughs> to to really be able to um to do an exceptional job with probably not much effort because that's what you're destined for and with you in in your role you know, and being able to have 
that keen eye to identify the talent and to bring the people together, right? And to get them to work in synergy. That's that's art right there, you know, and, and that's definitely um, a, a, a split off of divine intervention in itself. Praise God. That's so awesome. Yeah. Darwin, you wanted to say something? I was just saying that, um, that yeah, I mean, it's when you commit to being obedient to, to what God has called you to do, um, then there's no sort of of insecurity or apprehension about it you just do it because you know that's what you're supposed to be doing as opposed to you know doing something that you think you want to do then that will come across in your work but like mm -hmm. you know when you know that 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 okay this is what i'm supposed to be doing then there's no apprehension there's no insecurity there's you know you just go about it in full confidence mm -hmm. yeah and I could honestly, I could honestly speak for myself with that, you know. I, so I was laying on the couch last night. My wife was there, and I was looking at one of my previous uh, recordings, and she said to me, "You really enjoy doing this, huh?" Mm. And I said, "Yeah, because it, it seems like um, it's natural to me." Yeah. You know, that's to be able to to bring people together and have a conversation, highlighting their success stories, um, some of the challenges they face, you know, it's, it's so natural, you know, and um, it's totally different from having to go and work for someone and, you know, <laughs> and you got to work for someone rather than you have to work with people. And it's always my passion to work with people rather than work for them. Yeah. Right. So, but man, I, I just want to commend um, both you, David and, and Darwin for, D and D, I must call it, right? <laughs> H and D H. D H. Oh wow. <laughs> D H. And D H. You know, I must commend you guys for a great work. Um, I'm definitely a fan of of all that you all have been doing. I'm looking forward for future work. Um, I've been sharing it um, with all of my friends and families. Um, I I can't I can't even recall how many people I forward um, the Christmas movie to. Mm. I, I was just sending it to everybody and then they were they keep coming back to it's like oh my god this was really good some of them who know darwin they was like damn darwin did a good job you know it's like yeah <laughs> you know so great stuff great stuff and man i really appreciate you, both of you taking um time out of your busy schedule you know to come and spend a few um minutes here with me on under the microscope so um, I'm getting ready to come down to the end. We close, we're getting ready to close, but I just want to give each one of you an opportunity to share um, if there's any last thoughts um, for probably like a young man or a young woman who's watching out there or even people given the whole pandemic that we're going through, that we're still going through, who might be transitioning or probably sitting on that couch and yeah. saying, or acting is my thing, or I should be here, or directing should, you know, what words of encouragement you can give to them? Yeah. Well, I just want to say, man, thank you so much, Marcus, for the invitation to, to be on this show. And thank you, Darwin, for making the connection. And it is a blessing to work with my brother Darwin. And we are looking forward to seeing what God's got planned going forward. Um, my encouragement would be just to, um, trust God, and it might sound like really simple, but not just trust God, but then take steps, you know, each day, you know, whether it's another step in learning and growing, or it's another step in just, um, just connecting, just in, in connecting and in, in gleaning from somebody else. And, but what step can you take each day to, to get closer to the goal? Um, that you hope to achieve. And there's there's always a next step, you know. And I liken it to like just heading up the football field and just gaining yardage in the journey. Like, you know, you might not hit the get the first down every single step that or every single play, but at least you want to move the ball down the field. You want to get one yard here today, get three yards. And so, and don't get discouraged when you don't get very far each and every day. Just be grateful for each day. Trust God for each little step that you're able to take to reach that goal. Yeah. Thank you.
Yeah, um, what I can say is, and honest, honestly, one of the two, one of the um, characteristics of both of these films, Silent Night and Three Days Later, is that, you know, God is able to use anybody. You know, with Three Days Later, with the resurrection of those women, um, with um, uh, Silent Night, it was Charlie, somebody both who are, who are considered to be part of um, marginalized groups or whatever. Um, people that you that you wouldn't think that God would use, uh, women at the time, and Charlie. So, just you know, let your talent be used how God is destined for it to be used, and don't be afraid to fail because there's no growth if you don't mess up. So many people who feel like they don't fail at all, they they become a complacent. So, you know, if you do fail, fail big and then use that failure to go to the next level and then fail there. You know, what, what I was saying, um, fall down six times, get up six or seven or whatever, or something like that. Fall down six times and get up seven. So just I'll continue to just get up after you knock down and keep working. It's good. Yeah, that is so true. You know, um, I, I can honestly say I've, I've um, had failures you know out of every failure and as they say out of the dust um is life right and what happened yesterday it's now in the past and now the sun comes up doesn't matter what's going on right at some point it's going to come up right and the storm going to pass right and glory will definitely show its face right and it, 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 it's it's just it's just so crazy to hear, you know, both of you all actually mentioning that because people think because they fail, they they, they see themselves as a failure, and or they may have individuals who might tell them you're a failure. Yeah. But I believe in using every every failed attempt as a learning experience, right? And 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 and. Every, and I could say, and I show all of you, I could say you have failed in some things, but you have learned what not to do the next time around, mm. right? And if you have a couple of failures, especially if you're pursuing something, all you're doing is getting better and better and better because you know not to repeat those same mistakes. Mm. Yeah, and failure is not the end goal. Failure is just part of the process. Yeah, part of the process, right? Who, who When you look at, you know, you have rocket rockets going up to or, or spaceships going up to the moon. Mm -hmm. It didn't happen overnight. There were so many failures. There were probably, you know, individuals who probably lost their lives or whatever the case is, mm -hmm. right? But that that pretty much was that sacrifice. And 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 coming back to that word sacrifice, a lot of people want but don't want to pay the price for it. Mm -hmm. There is a price for everything. Yeah. yeah. Is if you're willing to pay for it, right? You will go in the store and you will see the sneakers that you want to buy. It might be $160. You now have to assess whether you're willing to pay that price. Right. Right. And it's the same thing in life. You want you want all the best things in life, but you don't want to work towards it, right? Right. right. So I mean, I mean, we could sit here all day and 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 um and um, have have that you know moment and go over situations, life stories, mm. right? and 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 testify to to things that we have gone through or we've seen people going through. But right. um, I know we have a lot to do, and um, definitely I have as well as everybody. We got some things to do, but it was a pleasure having yeah. both you, Marcus. D H, Mr. <laughs> Darwin Harris and David Ham. It was a pleasure having both of you all under the microscope. You are now, you have now been removed under that special. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, thank you so much, Marcus. Bless you, brother. You're welcome. So ladies and gentlemen, you have heard it. Um, please, on Friday at 7 o'clock, um, I will put all the information under, the, under this video in the description. I'll put the actual link so you'll be able to click the link and actually get access to um, to that premiere um, of three days later, the first part of it, right? Yeah. So, and then 
Sunday is the second part, but um, Saturday evening, we're going to have, if you're not a, you're able to see it Sunday, Saturday, you'll be able to see it. I have everything right so far? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Awesome, awesome. So ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of Under the Microscope. My name is Marcus Benjamin, and I'm the host, and I'm also the founder of AM Career Consultant. If you have any questions, Concerning this episode of Under the Microscope, please send us an email at info at amcareerconsulting.org. You can also visit our website for all your career needs via a and m careerconsulting.com. Dot um, org. So I'm sorry. Guys, have a blessed day. Thank you. Bless you. Bless you brothers. Yep. Have a good one.